<laughs> Let me talk about <clears throat> how you put your hook in the vise. We have some helpers here. Will you wait till I can when I need your help? I'd like to be in control of this, and I are not. Oh yes, you are. <laughs> All right. When you put your hook in your vise, notice that you want. I'm hoping this is going to uh, show. You want that hook. You don't want it too far in. A lot of times you're... Did you put record on? Thank you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't know. Did I? Yeah. It's flashing red. Okay. If you can draw a line from where the barb is straight up, straight up from the barb, you've got to have clearance when you're, with your thread when you're tying things on up to the left side of this uh, needle nose plier. Because oftentimes we're going to tie everything in directly above the barb. So if you have your hook in way too far, you got the barb covered up, you're going to be tying it too far forward and that's going to cause a problem with the finished product. So you want to grab that bend enough that it should ping when you have your hook in the vise. You need it strong enough that it's not going to go up and down on you as you're tying, okay? Now, one thing that I will do every time I tie, I bend the barb down on a hook. Most of my fishing is catch and release. Uh, if you bend the barb down, you're not going to lose too many fish anyway. So if you are releasing them, it's much easier and less damaging to the fish if you bend the barb down. Now, I'm going to try and show you this. If you try to bend the barb down, with your pliers at a 90 degree to the hook like this a lot of less expensive hooks it will break right at the barb so if you're going to bend that barb down try to have your pliers parallel or on top of the, the hook point and squeeze that barb down and it doesn't take a, a lot of squeezing you have in your kit some barb masher pliers that's what those are for so in your kit you should have see if you can find your barb mashers and bend that barb down <clears throat> before we even start okay now did everybody bring your books I hope you did I want you to turn to uh, page six and seven in your booklet in the front half of the book, page six and seven. Because I'm going to be talking some hook terminology today, <clears throat> and if you aren't at least introduced to it, I'll be talking Greek to you. So, take a look at the illustration on page six. It's a good illustration. On page six, I'll be talking about the length of the hook shank, a lot of our flies, you need a point of reference. I'll be talking about the length of the hook shank. I'll be talking about the eye of the hook. You're going to hear me say about a thousand times, don't crowd the eye. So you know what I'm talking about when I say eye. The bend, the bend, there are several kinds of bends that you can find on hooks. This happens to be a perfect bend. Uh, but I'll be talking about the the gape or the gap of the hook, that's another reference point that we'll be using today. I'll be using that, we're going to have a little tail on our fly, and I'll use that gape of the hook as kind of reference. You want your tail about as long as the gape or the gap of the hook, okay? The barb, which we just matched down, we, like I mentioned earlier, we'll be tying a lot of things in directly above where that barb would be. On the next page, some of this terminology is a little weird. For those that are, aren't uh, uh, familiar with hook terminology, the larger the number that describes the hook, the smaller the hook. It's just fast backwards. The larger the number of the hook, the smaller the hook. This hook we're using today is a size 10 
one XL. The one XL means this size 10 hook is as long as the next size larger, which would be a size 8. So one XL is going to be uh, a little bit longer than a standard length of a hook. You could have a 1x short, means it's shorter by the next size hook. So, and all that is in the book. I'm not going to beat it to death. It's some good stuff there on hooks. If you want, take a quick look at page 9. There are several different kinds of hooks you have here. We'll be using mostly round or sprout. Some hook sizes that we use in class are difficult to get with a, a round or a perfect bend. So we'll be using a sprout, which is a little bit longer. The gap, the gap is not quite as wide. And some of the hooks we're using today, there will be a few round or perfect like this hook. Some of them will have a little bit flatter, a little bit more of a curve to it. But it's a size 10, 1XL. That's what we're really working hard on today. For homework, like for you guys, the, the new folks and those that, are, that I call them repeaters, if you haven't done this, you ought to do it too. Uh, take a look at uh, some terminology. Half hitch on page 24. <coughs> this, you'll see me use it because I'm a creature of habit. I use it a lot. It's a real quick, easy way to tie a half hitch without having to get our half hitch tool out. So look over that so you become a little bit familiar with it. And then in your kit, there is a whip finisher. It's a tool that, where's mine? Well, there it is. It's a tool that looks something like this. Mine just has a bigger handle, same, same end. This will probably be the one of the most frustrating things you have to learn. When I first started tying, I went to the fly shop three weeks in a row and said, show me one more time, how does that tool work? But once you get the hang of it, you can tie multiple knots, because this rotates. And every time that rotates, that's another, another knot. So look that over, and during the course of the class, we'll work on using your hand for a half hitch tool and hopefully you'll be able to master this whip finish tool before we're finished with the class. Okay, now <clears throat> let me, let me, I don't know if I have everything you have. There's, there's silver and they say hook masher on it. That's, that's, that's not the hook masher. You may not have one in your kit. You just use a small fly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it looks like this. Don, you should have one in your kit. You should have them. That's, that's the, uh, the plier masher. Uh, you should know what scissors look like. Uh, you should have in your kit a spool of black 6-aught thread. 6-aught thread is going to be stronger and thicker than 8-aught. It's just uh, the, the larger the number of the thread, the smaller the textile strength of that thread is. If you're doing a lot of dry fly tying with really small hooks, you probably will jump up to like 10 or 12 aught thread. And it is so, it's, it's like spider web fine. And you, you have to learn how to, uh, how to adjust the tension without breaking the thread. 6 aught is a good beginner thread. Uh, it will tie most everything that we are going to be tying this year. We do have other sizes of thread available. That little contraption, you should have one in your kit too. It's called a bobbin. Okay? It's what holds your spool of thread. Okay? In your kit, you should have what is called a bobbin threader. It says a little, a little wire gizmo. Probably has a black handle. Uh, use this to thread your, your bobbin. I don't use that very often. I have a tendency. I use what I call the spaghetti method. Okay. 
I'll take my thread. Notice in your bobbin, you don't you don't want that thread looped around either of the two sides. You want it straight into the ceramic eye. And I would not do this for your thread, but I will do it for mine. I will try to thread that in through the bobbin. Spaghetti style, suck, suck it, it right through. Just like you're slurping spaghetti off a fork. Okay? Uh, you should, that's see, that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, you should have something that looks like this. Okay? It gets a lot of names. It's actually a half hitch tool, it's called a dauber. It's a multi function tool that we use a lot in fly tying. The pointy end, if you want some very precise application of head cement or something, that fine point helps you do that. You're probably going to use the other end much more. Before we leave today, I want you to be able to tie a knot with this half hitch tool. And we're going to put some thread on a hook in a minute and kind of get the hang of how you put thread on a hook and then how you tie a knot. You've got to be able to tie knots or everything you tie on has got to unravel, okay? You should have that tool. Uh, you should have something called a hackle plier. Uh, I have a different one with me. If, you, if you're a fan of, yeah, if you're a fan of Radio Shack, this is the best place to buy them, probably the cheapest place to buy them. We use this little gizmo when we're working with hackle. It has a little clip on the end and it's punch, punch operated and you can wrap that tip of the hackle through that little clamp and it helps you wrap hackle when we're doing that. But you should have one of those, okay? On my vise, you have a little uh, material spring, a little stainless steel spring, you should have that in your kit. You may want to try and attach that to your vise because oftentimes we'll want to get the bobbin with the thread on it out of the way or get materials out of the way and that little coil will grab the materials and, and, and hold it, keep it out of the way for you. So you may want to mess with that at home. It's not critical that you have it today. I'm trying to go by memory and see what we have in the kit. Uh, what's in your kit that I haven't mentioned? Anything? I've mentioned everything that I think we're going to be using today, so... All right, everybody, try to get a hook in your vise. And get your bobbin and thread ready to go. Because we are going to put some thread on a hook. I've got to show you how you get thread on a hook. If the thread comes off too easily, you can adjust the tension on the two sides by squeezing them in together. If it's too tight and you're breaking thread to get it off the, uh, the, off the uh, spool, just do the opposite. Spread a little bit. You want it to be pretty tight. It ought to take a little pressure to get it out. You don't want it too loose and you don't want it so tight that as you are winding thread on your hook that it comes off by itself. So, folks that have been in the class before can kind of help you get that adjusted. But I'm going to wait till everybody has got their bobbin rigged, thread ready to go, hook in your vise, and then we're going to do a couple things before we even get started. I'm going to put the thread behind the hook and I'm going to put it about where the bend is. Everybody see that on the screen? Look at the screen first. Look at the screen, okay? You want the thread behind the hook. If you have it in front of the hook, when you wrap it's, it's, it's going to come all undone. Put the thread behind the hook, okay? Then I'm going to bring my bobbin up and I'm going to make a couple of light turns and I'm going to see if I can't get this a little bit closer so you can see better. Now all my turns so far are in front of that vertical tag. If I don't attach that tag, when I keep going, that's what's going to happen. 
okay? Thread behind the hook, make a couple of turns, and notice you've got to get that thread back behind the first couple of wraps so you grab that tab again. Now when I pull, it won't come loose. Let me show you that one more time. I've got the thread behind, I'm going to make a couple of turns right in front, then I'm going to go back over those turns and make sure I've got that tag end in my left hand, I've got that grabbed. Now my thread will not come unraveled when I'm tying. Okay? Now, <clears throat> one other common mistake of beginning tires. I'm going to back this off so I can demo it a little bit better. Okay? A lot of tires, when they start, look how much thread they have out. You know, it's not even on the screen. If you're trying to wrap that thread with three or four inches of thread out, number one, you can't control the placement as well. And number two, it's going to take you four times longer to make a turn because you've got too much thread out. You don't need any more than about an inch of thread out. In fact, you can use with less than that. But notice how quickly you can, you can make wraps if you have a small amount of thread out. Okay? It comes very quickly. Okay? All right, try to get some thread attached. When you have it attached good, use your scissors. I use a little knife to cut my thread off. I've just done that out of habit for so long. That's the only way I do it. But see if you can get thread attached, and then we're going to practice some wrapping. And I want you to try using your half hitch tool to tie a knot on your hook.